Hey Raghunath, tell everyone about our Patreon community. Sure, Kostuba. The Wisdom of the Sages Patreon community is an incredible online yoga resource. If you like the type of yoga wisdom and culture we share on the show, then our Patreon community is a great next step. This is a listener-supported podcast, and any level of sponsorship will unlock a wide range of live and archived classes, talks, and even workshops. Raghunath teaches, I teach, and we have a host of other excellent teachers on topics ranging from yoga philosophy, asana classes, storytelling, Ayurveda, kirtan, cooking, meditation, and a lot more. We even have an incredible online bhakti 12-step recovery group. So if you want to check it out, go to patreon.com slash wisdom of the sages. All right, let's get it on. Live from Super Soul Farm, this is Wisdom of the Sages, a daily yoga podcast with your host, Raghunath, and co-host and senior educator at the Bhakti Center in New York, Kastuba Das. Welcome to the show, and welcome to... It's Tuesday, right? Tuesday. Yeah, this is, what do you call it? marriage? Uh, arranged, arranged marriage, marriage, marriage Tuesday. Tuesday. <laughs> yeah. And today we have Mara. Mara's getting married again. <laughs> 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 oh, Kastuba. We enjoy country on, living there? upstate. And we went to Katiri's house. And uh, oh, it was incredible. There's a whole new thing with this Katiri here, huh? Katiri, she's got. got she's, going She's got a lake. She's got a lake in her backyard. I would love that. You know, every time I go upstate, I say, let's go to a lake. Like, he, oh, yeah, yeah. he really does. He always says, let's go to a lake. And I'm always like, eh. Yeah, you're, you take it for granted. You're up there, you know. Oh, but it was nice. Right. Even Tarun, they have this thing for my kid with a cast. We thought he was going to ruin his entire summer. They've got this gigantic... I don't want to say condom, but it's like a gigantic <laughs> condom. <laughs> I would go over his entire leg. And it's rubber and it sort of seals. He was tubing. He was tubing yesterday with that gigantic rubber balloon on his leg. It was and great. the thing floats. It, it floats, sort of. I put, him, I put a life jacket on him. Okay. He's had, having the time of his life. How are you? I'm doing all right. How did you uh, fast go yesterday? You fasted? Did you do some kind of special? Uh, it's all good until we get to Kateri's house. And she, oh. <laughs> yeah. Everything went really well, right, Justin? Don't ask. Justin. We're, you know, me and Justin, we're not ready for 5 a.m. because we got there was this incredible, beautiful, tragic rainstorm last night on the way home. So we didn't get home till what? I don't know. I didn't get, I didn't get to bed till midnight, personally. So right. this whole thing, I was like, oh, I'm going to sleep until 4.45. And my damn cat wakes me up at 4.15. How can you refer to your cat that way? Come on. My damn cat? Yeah. I love children. my cat. I'm a cat person, <laughs> but they, they, what do you call it? They just keep weird hours. And when they want to get in the house, they let you know. Okay. All right, let's do this, Kostuba. What I got a little do? nectar nugget for you today. Who's it from? This is from Prabhupada. It's oh, from a, well, lect- a lecture in 1979. Okay. Listen to this one. Krishna is within you. He is sitting within your heart as a friend, not as an enemy. It's a nice mm. way to put it. We've, enema- we've enemified God. We en- fear God. Yeah. What? We enemified God. That's, that's a weird word. I don't think it is. It well, is a word. Alpod made up words. Why can't I make up a word? <laughs> because it sounds like enema, and, and it just it doesn't work. That's, that, that, that one didn't work. I think that's why Justin is. <laughs> oh, man, I get it. Yeah. I get it. He's sitting as a friend, not as an enemy. Krishna is always your friend. Suridam Sarvabhutanam. That means you are the friend. He is the friend of all living entities. Yeah. You are searching out friends to talk with to joke with to love krishna is sitting there for that purpose if you love krishna if you make friendship with krishna if you love krishna then your life will be successful you haven't got to search out any other friends 
The friend is already there. Either you are a boy or a girl, you will find a nice friend within yourself. Oh. That's, that's from Prabhupada's lecture in New Vrindavan, June 7, 1969. Great verse. Here's another one. If you love... this is Hold on, hold on. We're going to spend a little time with that one. That well, was sort really of like, nice. Sort of the same thing. Oh, you got when okay, you love, so When you got. love God... I guess this isn't the same thing, but I read it. I read it also. When you go, lo, when you love God, you love every living being. They're related, I think. They're sort of related. Okay. Yeah, because it's saying you know, you, cause I was actually thinking just that way that, and you know what? Even that ties into today's thing. But it's kind of like well, everybody's out there. You know, people are lonely. You know, we live in a world now where, um, you know, like. Family units aren't what they used to be. It used to be you live in a big family, like you know, with your aunts and uncles and cousins and all of that. You know, you got a like, baby. Your brother's holding the baby, passing it to your sister, passing yeah, it to your sister-in-law. You worked near like where you lived. You didn't have to like drive an hour and a half to get to work and drive an hour and a half back and then go to sleep and you're like where are my friends? And then you got to create some kind of artificial circumstance to be with your, you know. But so pe I think people are lonely. You know, like there's a lot of loneliness sure. nowadays. You know, people, and plus the technology adds to all of that where you just kind of get addicted to sitting in front of the technology and you don't get out there. And then you try to meet people and you got to try to meet them online. And then these Zoom people know. are my best friends and they're like, I've <laughs> yeah, never seen right. them before. That's why it's for us. <laughs> I've never seen any one of them. <laughs> but, but I think people, they, they work really hard to try to find friends that they, they, they don't always succeed. We feel some sense of loneliness. And what Prabhupada is saying here is, hey, you know what? Even if you're feeling that way, don't worry about it. There's a friend right in your heart. And it's not something that's, um, I don't know, you know, it, it seems like, yeah, but that's so uh, untangible or something like that we'll never really experience. He's saying, no, 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 have faith. You know, you, you will find your friend there if you make that your priority, if you make that your focus. And then I was going to add to that, which kind of related to what you did. I bet, you know, once you do that, probably all the other friends kind of come out of the woodwork, too. You know, it's like, uh, uh, you know, we were making that conservative effort. But if we could come in touch with that root of all existence, the way that it will affect how we relate to everybody else will be profound. Right. And And we might feel like... You know, maybe p part of our problem is we want certain things from these friends and it never quite fills, fulfills our ambitions. But when you kind of let go, you feel that connection to God in the heart. You begin to relate to people without demanding anything from them. And naturally, you, you're feeling the sense of friendship that was missing, even externally as well. As well, you're not so needy in your yeah. friendship. You're, you actually have something to offer a friend. Your connection mm -hmm. makes you grounded, makes you, it makes you have something to offer. What do you think about yeah. that, Mara? What? <laughs> yeah, that's 5 a.m. Uh, 5 a.m. Mara. We call her. Used to <laughs> She's the one that wanted to go back to 5 a.m. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. It was that was the nicest uh, email we ever got. I think yesterday was one of the nicest emails. Was that an email? Was that an email? Oh, no. No, it was an Apple. It was a review on Apple Podcasts. I like that one. Yeah, you know what? Beautiful. From? Who was it? it from? From? I think the guy's name was Krishna, but. No, it wasn't Krishna. It was. Um... Did I read that wrong? <laughs> Do you want to read it, Mara? Should we read it? Sure. Should we read it, or is it? Is, does that sound self-indulgent if we read it? It was beautiful. Danya Raj was the name of the person it was from. Danya Raj. Okay. Yeah. That's the 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 king of Danya. Char it charity. Char it's being charitable. Yeah. All right. Blake said that if the doors of per perception. Uh, Sorry, I lost it. Blake, Blake, said if, Blake. Who's Blake? Blake? Robert right. Blake? Is it a Blake? Blake. William Blake. William Blake. William Blake, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Robert <laughs> Henry Blake. Blake. <laughs> Blake said that if the doors of perception were cleansed, everything would appear to man as it is, infinite. Personally, personally, I've sometimes felt discouraged to advance spiritually or expand my consciousness or accept the disciplines of a path of enlightenment after listening to some practitioners, either because their language was lofty, their ideals seemed unreachable, unreachable or this is a big one, they didn't mm -hmm. concretize or really bring together the benefits of such enlightenment. Enter Raghunath and Kastuba. They've been practicing the transcendental art of bhakti yoga for years, having realizations, involving themselves in society, making pal palpable improvements in their worlds, but are still human, still real people. 
I think that what inspires me most about them is that they're proof that transformation is within, that I won't start to hover or make ash come out of my palms if I become a devotee of God, but I'll just look the same except with a greater capacity to love. Lectures are very enjoyable for me, you know, getting right into a philosophical concept and just flooring it through for an hour. Wisdom of the sages, however, satisfies a desire I didn't even know I had. Namely, learning how to talk to other people, making spiritual friendships, laughing, and being there for others. This is unlike any podcast I've ever heard. It's contemporary, about the real world, and its heart is a very special book, a biography of saints, sages, and seekers, and their relationship with the transcendent person, the acme of divine love, Krishna. What a well-written. Yeah, beautiful. I should be a, should be a writer. Thank you, Dunya Raj. Thank you. Yeah, that was really nice. So why don't are why aren't you guys going to Apple Podcasts and writing a review? <laughs> That's what I want to say. Why don't we just start giving prizes to the people that write the best review? <laughs> <laughs> we got to mention that before we dive in that we are giving away two sets of these very very nice malas from tulasimala.com, t u l a s i dot com, for someone who says their best Krishna miracle writes in your best Krishna miracle. That happened to you. you know, we're always talking about seeing the miracle in things, and they're right in front of our face. A pe- right. The peonies are in bloom right now. It's a miracle. It's a miracle. It may not win a, you the prize. That's a miracle. <laughs> but it's a, a prize for that because I recognize that no one else has. Uh, so, okay. I'm ready to dive in. Namo. Uh, oh. Narayanam. Narayanam namaskritiam naram shaiva narotamam. Devim Sarasatim Vyasam Tatojayam Mudire. Before reciting the Srimad Bhagavatam, which is our very means of conquest, one should offer respectful obeisances to the Supreme Lord Narayan. Unto Nara Narayan Rishi, the supermost human being, unto Mother Saraswati, the goddess of learning, and to Srila Vyasadev, the author. Nasta Prayesha Badreshu Nicham Bhagavat Sevaya Bhagavati Uttamasloke Bhaktir Bhavati Naishtiki. By regular attendance in classes in the Bhagavatam and by rendering service to the pure devotees, all that is troublesome in the heart will become wiped out. And loving service to the Supreme Lord, who is praised with transcendental songs, will be established in the heart as an irrevocable fact. Om Jnana Timarandasya Yananjana Shalakaya Chaksurun Mitam Yena Tazmai Shri Gurave Namaha. We're in it. We're in the Srimad Bhagavatam, Kano 3, Chapter 12. Text something or other. Let's see. I think we're on text 49. What show number is this, Mira? 465. Okay. We got with 35 to go to the big 500. We got to figure out what we're going to do. Some kind of extravaganza. I'm going to get a tattoo on the show. <laughs> 500? Serious. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Justin says a total makeover. <laughs> a drag makeover. <laughs> Come on, Justin. <laughs> He's got to dress me as a gopi. Um, text 49. Text 49. Here we go. Ready? 12. Can't do three. There, Kostu was in no mood for playing today. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> Justin. Thereafter, Brahma accepted another body in which sex life was not forbidden. Because hmm. one was produced. Okay. 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 Hmm. Right. And thus he engaged himself in the matter of further creation. O son of the Kurus, when Brahma saw that in spite of the presence of the sages, of sages of great potency, there was no sufficient increase in population, he seriously began to consider how the population could be increased. Mm. So in other words, he created, we read earlier in the chapter how he created all these sages who were meant to be progenitors. And to some degree, they're effective, but not enough. Okay. Okay, the job's not getting done. Yeah. Brahma thought, Brahma thought to himself, Alas, it is wonderful that in spite of my being scattered all over, there is still insufficient population throughout the universe. There is no other cause for this misfortune but destiny. So he's yeah, working his hard. He's, yeah. work, he's doing his best. He's trying. He's got all these su- supreme opulences and potencies. Yet he can't fulfill what he's here to do. He's tried as hard as he could. What was that phrase that you use? Rogan, Rogan? There's no other cause for this misfortune but destiny. 
No, no, no. The phrase that you use. In, in other words, like that he of tried average. to control it. He tried. To, he did everything he could. Can I say uh, something of fate? No, I don't Trick know. You had some saying that I heard you say before. Like you, you, you act like you, you're. Oh, con act as if you're in control, but deeply okay. understand you're not in control. Okay, there you go. There's a takeaway act right there. Act as if you're in control, Mara, but <laughs> deeply understand we're not in control. So he was acting as if he was in control. He he was going through all kind of obstacles, right? If we go back to we see this whole chapter has been quite a roller coaster ride for Brahma. You know, he's gone through a lot. Everybody yeah. goes through it. Even Brahma. Yeah. But he didn't stop trying. He was determined. You know, that's Sattva Guna. You know, like people think like Rajaguna is passionate. It means you're trying really hard. But actually, Sattva Guna means your determination is unbreakable because it's not tied to any kind of external, uh, you know, payback. Like, I'm sure. not getting what I want out of this. So I'm going to stop. Sure. Like when you're in Sattva Guna, you're doing it because it's the right thing to do. And so Brahma is like, he's just doing it because it's the right thing to do. And, um, and he, and when, when he tried as hard as he could and it still wasn't successful, he didn't get angry or frustrated with, you know, with the world or something like that. But he, he said, okay, it must be destiny. I, I, I've given all that I can. And then look what happens when he lets go. I've been, you know, I've been trying to do these sweet baby Krishna evening for our patron members. And yeah. it's one of those things, like, I feel like it is, it is good, you know, because I'm going through some transition right now in my life that, uh, again, these defaults are there to get to go through or a sadness or a depression or a loss and stuff like that. So I'm, I'm directing all that stuff towards hearing and chanting. Well, and it's, you, well, it's, you, been, it's been a godsend. And what's that verse you always quote? To tick shabam bum 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 No, 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 no. When you're going through the rough times. You Way, it, you know, it's like waves, waves, stuff like that. You know um, what? Oh, but yeah, if the ahead. Krishna book is there, if by taking shelter, hearing about Krishna's pastimes, and you direct it there, I felt so filled with joy yesterday after that class yesterday. Mm. It really took me, took me out of my body and out of my mind. You know, I think that... Um, particularly when we're going through, uh, when we reach those um, crossroads in life, you know? Forks. Forks in the road. Sinkholes. Not necessarily sinkholes, but where you have to make a decision, where you're making a, like, a decision that's going to be like, have lasting consequences. Fork. Right? Okay. Yeah. You know, they call it a fork. You can choose this path or that path. Um, at those times in particular, they're, they're potentially dangerous. Like in the sense that, like, w we we could potentially make a choice that sends us down a road that kind of like diverts us from our spiritual path. Yeah, uh, and, and sometimes one choice is not yeah. one choice; it's a domino effect of choices, isn't it? Yeah, because well, once you're going down that road, you accept what's on that road, you know, and it's it's going to be a whole. And sometimes menu. you get locked into that road. Yeah, like a, like a current of a river. You're like, okay, goodbye, woo. <laughs> yeah, and so things like that, later. you know, like, you know, things having to do with marriage, things having to do with occupations, things having to do with, you know, like major purchases, like purchasing a home or, or moving yeah, somewhere, decisions. Now, those kind of big decisions the, the what I've seen, what I've tried to practice, but what I've seen in people that are wise is that it's in those times, you know, it's in those times where we can become most frivolous, most whimsical, like, yeah. you know, where, where we're where we, um, that lower nature begins to rule us. And, and our, our material desires begin to say, I want that road. There seems to be so much happiness down that road. But the wise people, what I see is, you, you're saying you're taking shelter of Bhagavatam. And, uh, and that's, of course, perfect. And I was also thinking, like, what I've also seen is, and this is something that you're also doing, is the wise people, they really hear from those people that they admire, those people that they've developed a close relationship and, and people that they think really have wisdom, right? Like, I need to hear your opinion about the decision that I'm about to make, right? I, I need some sober, detached, clear thinking, and I need to incorporate that into my, you know, into my decision making. And, uh, and, and so people that take that kind of shelter, you know, that, that have the, um, that, that can say, I need a I need the the truth here 
whether it's what I want to hear or what not what I want to hear. And I need it at this time in my life because this is going to affect so much down the road. You know, those people, they stay on that path. They keep moving forward, you know. And if we're not careful in those times, there can be real times of diversion. So I like what you're doing, Rogo. Thank you. Bhagavad time, sweet baby Krishna. Yeah. We're going to do it again tonight. I didn't tell anybody. I'm just announcing it now. All right. 8.30. Sweet baby Krishna tonight, 8.30. Great. Sounds good. You there? Mara's down. Yeah, I'm in. Okay. Alrighty. <laughs> it was so funny about uh, AJ Sullivan's coming coming out party. What what happened? What was that all about? It, it was at the beach with his family, and there what was beach? a Harinam. Where was Some, he? Somewhere in Delaware-ish area, Sheridan Sobinsinski, okay. Sherry Sobinsinski land. Okay. Um, and then. Uh, a bunch of devotees came chanting down the beach. And he was a bunch just of Harry like, Krishnas come yeah, down the beach? Man, they were <laughs> just, I was just was, I was a fly on the wall. <laughs> so he says... Uh, and, and no, there were people with him going, oh my God, these guys are going to chant on the these beach. These guys. <laughs> and, and he, he said, said he goes, yeah. uh, first of all, he, he knew they were there and he said, I'm going to disappear for a few minutes. And he went and he sat and chanted with them. <laughs> and just saying, yeah, Dan, Dan Lewis... Yeah, they came looking for the devotees came looking for him. My mom had a look of horror on her face. <laughs> <laughs> well, hold it. Now he came down he came with them now? Like he kind of joined the group right in front of them or something? I don't know. You wanna unmute him? Let's hear the story. It's worth it. <laughs> oh, <over there. laughs> what happened, AJ? Hey, good morning. Good morning, AJ. Good morning. What happened Tell yesterday? Us another the story. It sounds like fun. <laughs> so yeah, so uh, the Delaware Iskon Temple was doing Harinam down in Lewis, Delaware, where my parents happened to have a, a beach house down there. And uh, we were down for the weekend. And I said, hey, I, I can disappear for a little bit, go meet the devotees and, and do some chanting for a little bit. So, so I they, did. your and, family uh, knows nothing of your spiritual. No, no we're, we're not a very spiritual family. So I, I keep it to myself for the most part. So they, they've heard All bits right. and pieces. You know, they heard bits and pieces. Uh, through my daughter mostly she's eight so she doesn't keep secrets yeah, but um okay. so yeah so <laughs> we're uh i go and i chant for a little bit with the devotees and i say okay oh, guys, so you're on the see. beach with your family and then the devotees no. you hear them in, a di in the distance i i knew i knew they were down there they're about okay. maybe 10 minutes away from where i was oh so he had insider I, info I, so he went to find, yeah. search them out yeah so i i took a walk and went and hung out with them and then uh I said, all right, guys, nice seeing you. Have a great weekend. I'll see you at the temple next weekend. And then I'm sitting on the beach with my wife and my family, my parents, and, you know, 20 of their closest friends. And oh, uh, 20 of their oh, closest friends? You got to explain guess, it to the whole posse. It's more interesting, yeah. Uh, yes. <laughs> and then my, I, I'm sitting there, and my wife looks up, and she says, oh, my God, here they come. Oh, your wife come doesn't even know you? Oh, she, no, my wife knows. She was giving me the warning that, that yeah. this was oh, happening. Okay. <laughs> it's about to blow up. A, yeah, here comes a handful of devotees with, you know, madrungas and cartels marching oh, down I'm the saying, beach, yeah. chanting the Maha Mantra, uh, looking for me. And I'm oh, looking for you. And, yes, my, my parents and these folks and their friends are kind of looking up and they're, you know, what in the world is going on? And they're uh, kind of amused. You know, they're kind of amused, like, oh, what is this? And then I pop up and run over to, to join them and say hello. Oh, that's and the good. You didn't, pull a, you didn't pull a Judas and deny them. I have no idea <laughs> who they are. Who do you know? I, 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 couldn't, know <laughs> I couldn't dig a hole on the beach fast enough to get it. But, uh, <laughs> so, yeah, so I, uh, I, I jumped up and ran over. And, and when I ran over to say hello, the look on my mom's face was uh, it was something. It went from, from amusement to horror very quickly. Oh, and she, she comes over and she tells me afterwards, she says, AJ, those are the Harry Krishnas. So, yeah, yeah I know, Ma. They, they kidnap people from airports. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> I said, I, I, I think you got your, I think you got your stories mixed up. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. So, but what, what I thought was fun, though, was one of the, one of the women in, in my parents' friends group, um, you know, she popped right up and ran over to the devotees as well. And, huh, and she's like, I know see? you guys. I know. I know the Krishnas. I know the Krishnas. And, you know, she starts chanting and somebody gives her cartels and she's playing. And what? You, know, so you it's, see it's, that? Yeah, it was, you to it. You see that? She, random and then person she was in introducing the devotees to, yeah, she started introducing the devotees to my family before I had a chance to. Look so, at that. 
that's a Christian yeah, miracle. It's, it's, yeah, it's pretty funny. It's, it was Give a good time. But, uh, and you would have never have known about that connection. If this no, had no. I mean, Imagine if yeah, they was, all got up. Ah, oh, where are the devotees are here? <laughs> <laughs> My mom starts dancing. <laughs> <laughs> Thank awesome. you for yeah, that, it was, AJ. It was interesting. Your, yeah. Thank you, AJ, for that coming out story. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, guys. Uh, it was beautiful. Oh, uh, yeah, that's always a tough call. I wonder that's just always... how, you know, the question is how artful are, are those devotees and kind of like blending in and mixing? Could could they relate or are they like just kind of like weird? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, yeah. Is it weird? Is it cool? It depends who you meet, I guess. It, could, it all depends. You know, we should we should have another Tulsi Mala giveaway or some type of giveaway for one who comes with the best coming out story. <laughs> I don't know how Mara came out. She brought her dad Probably to the not. Harry Krishna, Harry Krishna movie, I think. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I then she's know like, that happened. Probably just the yeah. show. It was the show. It's probably. Not, mm-hmm. you no, know, it's not as weird anymore. Yeah. People are more open minded than they were when we were young, Kostuba. I think so. For me, I had to like leave a few books around my mom's house. <laughs> <laughs> All right, why don't we get back into this chapter? Right, sorry. Okay. <laughs> anyway, this is good stuff. It's all the Bhagavatam. Man. It's all the Bhagavatam, sure. So uh, Brahma, he kind of realized, okay, I tried to create you. So I tried that way. Then he kind of says, okay, it seems like this is destiny. Then what happens? Text then, 52. While he was thus absorbed in contemplation and was observing the supernatural power, Two other forms were generated from his body, and they are still celebrated as the body of Brahma. Mm. What? Two the two newly separated from. bodies united together in sexual relationship. Out of them, the one who had the male form became known as Manu, mm. uh, or as the Manu named Svayambhuva. So Manu is like a position of the 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 uh, the original progenitor of mankind it's actually where we get the english word man from manu named and his name was svayambhuva um and the the woman became known as satarupa the queen of the great soul manu thereafter by sex indulgence they gradually increased generations of populations one after another O son of bart in due course of time manu begot in Satarupa, five children, two sons, Priyavrata and Utanapad, and three daughters, Akuti, Devahuti, and Prashuti. The father, Manu, handed over his first daughter, Akuti, to the sage, Ruchi, the middle daughter, Devahuti, to the sage, Kardama, and the youngest, Prashuti, to Daksha. Uh, from them, all the world filled with population. So this is it. This is our creation story family tree family tree yeah um handed over means it's your arranged marriage very suitable for tuesday <laughs> okay that's right it's it's, that's the end it's of the arranged chapter. marriage tuesday so we're hearing yeah. about some of the early about the original marriages. arranged marriages yeah yeah but you know this is um a couple things interest me here one is uh the names that are being mentioned bec- and we can get into these in a minute because these are the these are the characters from which the whole Srimad Bhagavatam is going to stem now. Mm-hmm. Um, but also just this idea that, um, you know, it, it's kind of like when you enter into the material world, I think we have to, um, we have to say to ourselves, I'm going to go through it and I, and I deserve it and uh, I accept it. You know, it, if you look at Brahma's challenge here in his service, he really went through it. You know, he had a job to do. It wasn't easy. It was asked of him, you know, to develop all this creation. And again, we saw him go through disappointment and anger and fear and humiliation and so much. And then in the end, uh, he still hadn't accomplished his task, but he'd never stopped trying, you know. Um, he, 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 he stayed focused on his service. And when he felt like I've done all that I can do, it seems that it's destiny that's preventing me from achieving the goal. Hmm. At that point, Krishna just took it over. It was almost like Krishna can do all this stuff himself if he wants to, right? He doesn't need Brahma to do it, but he's giving Brahma the opportunity to perform the service for his own purification. 
And really, that's if, if we look at our own role in life that way, then we won't become bitter and complain and become disappointed. Become You know, it's like we, we do all that we can to, to, to play out our role in life. We may be successful, we may not be. But the point is, is that it's our path to purification to serve. So this so, is the yeah. this is the Gita, right? This is Bhagavad Gita. Yeah, uh, you're doing your duty. You have your duty in life. You show up for your duty, um, and you do it within certain parameters of Dharma of integrity. Mm -hmm. And ultimately, you leave that result up to Krishna. It didn't work. I didn't. I didn't fulfill my quota. It's not about your quota. Did Did you have the desire to serve Krishna today? Yes, I did. That's all. Now Krishna's pleased. Once you walk out that door, do you do you walk out that door in the morning? I'm here to serve Krishna today, or do you one not do your duty, or two not do it with that type of focus and meditation? Krishna doesn't care if we reach our quotas. Krishna wants to see we have the desire to serve Him. Right, right. Because the quota, He's He's going to allow the quota to be met or not. He's yeah. he's going to allow success if success or failure are ultimately in his hands. So therefore, you know, you get that verse that that, um, you know, right in the beginning and Krishna uses it. He almost like as a definition of yoga for Arjuna. Do your duty uh, equipoised? Well, I was thinking, yeah. you know, yoga sta kuru karmani 248, where he says, perform your duty equipoised, oh Arjuna. That's abandoning. What said. Yeah, but well, he says it in many ways, in many verses, but abandoning oh. all attachment to success or failure. Right. Mm -hmm. Such equanimity is called yoga. Right. Now you're not, most people are, are fighting their battles to get a, a result that they're going to take for themselves. And they're considering themselves the cause of the success or the failure. Whereas the yogi is saying, ultimately, success or failure doesn't even lie in my hands. I, my minute independence, it can be engaged, in, you know in reconnection or disconnection with God. Ooh, right? I like that. I like yeah, that. You like that? Okay, yeah. Mar Mara's noting that one down. That's Write that down. One, right? my, what was it? My minute independence can be engaged in reconnection or disconnection. And, and so that's my choice. And ultimately, that's where my freedom lies. That's where my independence lies in, in making that choice. Now, whether with, within the realm of this material world, I'm successful at carrying out a particular duty or not, mine is the choice to do the duty or not, to, to embrace the duty or not, to embrace the reconnection or not. And, uh, and we tend to be attached to external things. So it's like, well, come on, I'm trying and nothing's happening. I give up. But the devotee's not like that. The, the, the yoga part means I'm doing it with detachment. I'm doing it with knowledge and detachment. So um, Krishna says, Samatvam yoga uchite. That, it's that e e equal even mindedness. Even siddhi a siddhiho, whether I'm, I'm, achieving this goal or not achieving the goal whether i'm i'm successful or not i'm equipoised you know that when you perform your duty in that way it becomes yoga and this is what we're seeing brahma do right and then when he finally kind of you know he did all he could do and and he kind of said to himself it seems like it's fate that no matter what i do success won't be there then no success disappeared so if it's up to Krishna, why do I even try? Like, Krishna's going to figure this out. Because we act as if we're control. We act as if we're control. Mm -hmm. But we should deeply understand we're not in control. Hmm. Act as if you're control. Act as deeply if you're control. Meaning, meaning we don't just, like, say, well, let's Krishna figure it out. Let Krishna raise my kids. <laughs> Ma, Dad, we want lunch. Uh, ask Krishna for lunch. <laughs> but you know, in that verse follows another very famous verse that one Karmanya Karmanya Veda Karaste Mapale Shukadachana. Do tell. You have the right to perform your prescribed duty. Right? And really, um the word used here is adhikara. You have it, it's translated as right, but we could also say it's like adhikara means you qualification so it's it's krishna telling arjuna arjuna by qualification you should be working in this world as opposed to abandoning the, the work of this world and being a yogi that wanders off to the forest there's two ways to do yoga and, and this is going to be covered you know in the third chapter in the fifth chapter of the gita that there's there's the way of uh, uh, leaving behind all one's social roles 
these are paths that are very difficult, particularly for people in this age. We, we're, we won't be so successful at these paths. But then there are the paths of yoga where you embrace your social roles, being a mother, being a father, your, your occupation, finding ways to tie this into your yoga path. So when Krishna says, Karmanya Veda Karaste, it, it means that for you, by your qualification, your qualification is to work in this world, to take up occupations, to take up social responsibilities. But he says, but you're not entitled to the fruits of action. So you're different than the other workers. Most of the workers are working, they're being mothers and fathers or business people or this or that because they want to take something for themselves for their enjoyment. Here he's saying, you're not entitled to the fruits of action. You're doing it as service. And then he says, also, never consider yourself the cause of the results of your activities. That's a big one. Yeah. In other words, I surrender my independence to the cause. Look what I've done. <laughs> Look what I've created. Yeah. And you see great souls. Whenever they're doing something even big in this world, they say, oh, by my teacher's mercy, by my guru's mercy, by God's mercy, and uh, I'm just an instrument. Sometimes great artists say the same thing, too. Uh, I, I didn't sure. paint it. You know, uh, I just, felt like God was working through me. That's right. So that's the way that we want to get. We're, we're, th th how can you get to that place if you are considering yourself to be the cause of the results of your activities? It, you, you, you need another perspective. You need to kind of zoom out and look down on yourself as you're carrying out this work, right? And realize that my sole ability is to surrender, is to re choose to reconnect, and I'll give it my all as if I were in control, but all along knowing that the results ultimately aren't up to me. And so that's, that's a level of knowledge and detachment that transforms regular work into yoga. So he says, never consider yourself to be the cause of the results of your activities and never be attached to not doing your duty, right? So that's, that, that's you know, th this is... Yeah. That ego is like a big hard sh shell. It's like a real hard shell, a thick layer. Karma yoga is all about cutting through that hard shell. You know, there's no, it's actually, you know, just like with the, with like say Ashtanga yoga, there's the, the there's um, Patanjali's Yoga Sutras, which is like the book kind of on it. And when you get to uh, like Jnana yoga, you know, you have, you know, important works by Shankara and, and his followers that become, you know, but there's really no book for karma yoga out there. The book is the Bhagavad Gita. Right, like this, this right. is the book that that really kind of explains how common work gets transformed into yoga, and it's verses like these couple that we read right here that explain that. Now we're reading in Bhagavatam how it's playing out. Those same ideas are playing out in Brahma's service. He, I'm going through hell here. I'm trying to create. I've got a duty to do. I'm going to do it. I understand that I'm not the cause of it. I understand that I have nothing. I, I'm not trying to gain something separate from God through it. I'm doing it as a service and I'm willing to do it whether I'm successful or not. And I'm willing to go through whatever I have to go through to, to accomplish it. And in the end he realizes I've, I've done all that I can do now. And then ultimately the, the, um, the, the goal was met and the goal was met without his, without any, in the end it was out without any effort on his own part. He, he in one sense he gets the glory. He's known now as he's known as the great grandfather, right? Like he's the grandfather of like all humanity. He's respected by like all the different um, generations that come down. He's glorified. They turn to him uh, for wisdom. They turn to him for guidance. Um, so he 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 did get that glory, but he didn't do it for that glory. And in, and and in the end, it just kind of manifested from him automatically, right? Manu and uh, Satarupa just kind of manifest from him, and then they create. And how they create and who they create becomes the topic of the Bhagavatam, you know, each one of these. And that's where you break out that family tree, Raghu. There's a lot of great stories that are going to come through this. I, I think I, we should make the Wisdom of the Sages family tree to understand this Bhagavatam. We can share it with people. We can, we, we've shared it in the past on, um, on, uh, our, you know, on our Discord. Our Discord threads. thread. Are you yeah. on the Discord thread yet, people? If you're not, our Patreon members have this whole Discord thread. It's like a, what is it? It's like a whole like little a online message community. Board kind of thing, it's I like suppose. a message board thing where people talk to each other and share go crazy stuff. and share stuff and we make announcements through it. 
I know okay, Krishangi Krish- sent me, her husband made like a, a family tree, like a really good one. I got to go back and find that. Maybe she could send that to us again or share that on, on the Discord thing. But uh, that was the end of the chapter, Raghunath. Yeah, the next one it, it begins this very fantastic acid trip of a story where <laughs> a boar comes out of the nose. Well, that was another thing where it's like without any effort on his own. It's like, what happened? Right? Where Brahma just creates without even realizing it. You there? Are you no, frozen? Sorry, my, oh. your, your face froze. Everybody's oh. face froze in such beautiful places, actually. It never, <laughs> it never freezes you in a good... It's not like, okay, internet, wait one second, I'm going to freeze here and let me smile. It's always like, eh, eh, <laughs> eh. Uh, yeah, I'm sorry. So the appearance of Lord Varaha. So we have two things. We could start the new chapter. I could put you on the hot seat and begin to quiz you about Priyavrata, Uttana, Padukuti, Prashuti, and Devahuti. Don't do that. Don't do that. Just, oh, there's so just much good stuff, though, there. Well, you, you Don't put me on the hot seat for it, though. Just talk about okay, it. Okay, should we discuss it? Yeah, just, let's talk. Okay. You start. So there are two sons, and, and, and these are important. We're, for, for people that aren't familiar with the Bhagavatam, I guess, for people that are familiar with the Bhagavatam, it's going to be like, oh, whoa, I see. The whole thing is tied together. There's like a skeleton, you know, that is running through this whole Bhagavatam. Uh, and it's kind of being laid out right here at the beginning, you know. Um, so he, um, Lord Brahma is born on the lotus from Lord Vishnu. From his body comes fine Bhuva Manu and Shatarupa. And they have five kids. These kids are going to populate the world, and so many of their kids are going to become really important figures. Some of them are going to become incarnations of Lord Vishnu himself, right? Uh. Through, through their down the line, and some of them will become most of the most important devotees. How can this? Lord how Vishnu. can this? Just a few people populate everybody. There must have been some progenitors coming from different universes, planets. If we're really yeah. going to like say this is real. And we got it, or else we're all. They like, were, they were from different planets. What are you talking about? They weren't from no, this planet. But it seems like you need more. You know what I mean? It seems like you need. <laughs> that's your material or, quali- That's your material calculation. Doesn't you know? seem like it's a big incestual mess. Well, you or, see, in, in, well, not like incestual. Instance, What's the word? It, it, ancestral? ancestral, not ancestral. Incestuous? I guess incest, incestual. I guess that's the, Mara? Yes, incestuous. Incest. Incest. Incestuous. Incest. Well, you know, it's, I combine it's the ancestral with incest. <laughs> incest. <laughs> but, well, you know, we'll look at it this way. Take Daksha, right? Yeah. We're going to hear, as we come down this line from Uttanampad, right, who's one of the sons of Svayam Bhuva, he gets married, he has, uh, he has um, two daughters, one of them is Suniti, whose son is Druva. That line keeps coming down through Druva. Eventually gets to King Vena, who's just like the worst king of all time. Mm. And uh, they take him, the Brahmins take him out, right? Remember that story, Raghuna? Yeah, that's a great with, story. With Mantra, they just take him out, right? They assassinate yeah. him. Don't mess with the Brahmins. Don't They've, mess with the Brahmins. Yesterday yeah. we spoke of the Brahmins. They're the most powerful because they're the most attached. But they're also mystics. And they, right. we're going to get to the story. And where they, they did. Yes, Destroyed. they did all they could to, to try to like get him going on the right path, but he was just like so off. They just couldn't take any more. And then with high pitched sounds, they just took him out. <laughs> and then, uh, very interesting, huh? It's very interesting. And then, so and then, Duxia was some, this, you're saying Duxia was this progenitor. Well, Duxia's going to come down that was line. Post goat head Duxia? It's pre. It's pre. Okay. Imagine if you like. He probably had different children at different times. He probably had children when he had the normal human head, and then he probably had a goat head. Imagine well, that this, on your on your family photos. Who's that guy with the goat head on your wall? Yeah, that's well, this is great, pre-goat that's my head. great grandfather. But but we hear that as you come down this line, there's Daksha, and he has sixty daughters, and it says that those sixty daughters created many species. And he had 10,000... That 000... I find fascinating. I know you find that fascinating. Then he also had 10,000 sons, the Haryashvas, who Narda, they were all meant to be progenitors, and Narda turned them all into sannyasis, so they, they didn't become progenitors. Then he has 10,000 more, the, Sal, the Sal, what is it, the Savalashvas. 
and uh, and the same thing happened. But you can see the Daksha was capable of creating, you know, not just like a few kids, but like he was empowered to create. Okay, if someone's new to the show and you said someone has ten thousand kids, yeah. and then ten thousand more, if someone's new to the show. Here's what they're gonna say, Kostuba. Yeah. What? Yeah, Wait well, a so second. What? I miss. I didn't get that memo. What? No. How do you? This is. Don't you understand? Why are you taking this so literally? This is the problem with you religionists. You take everything literal. Aren't these stories meant to just give some type of uh, feeling or some idea? Some lesson. Some, some lesson. Why be a literalist? This is where religion goes wrong. You take these things literally. You complicate things. We're supposed to like imitate this or something. Come on, ten thousand kids. Can't we just be adults here? Yeah. Because your in answer? your, your experience, well, well, let's. Because in my experience, no one gives ten thousand kids. You have and, seven and, kids. You have yeah. nine kids. You have fourteen kids, and then that's come on. And how vast is your experience? Like it's pretty vast. I'm like fifty-five years old this year. Is it? Yeah. I met a and, lot of families, a lot of moms. <laughs> Yeah. Your 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 experience is actually so tiny it's practically inconceivable. I mean it's 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 just like so so completely small, you know, insignificant that you have no idea how how you know even within this we even on this planet there are things that people know that you don't know about like how species recreate, you know. Jellyfish. How do jellyfish recreate? I don't yeah. even know. No, you know, I gotta ask one of my kids. They know here, stuff he, like this. here we see what, what on earth. Maybe someone from our um, from our chat board can help us. What species on earth gives birth to the most largest number of? Oh, Mara, offspring? that's the Mara. Mara, fact check that one, please. Yeah, what gives the yeah, most? I bet it'll gives... be really interesting. You know, and then we'll see that even here on Earth, you know, there there are certain species that give like many, many, maybe let's not ten thousand, but let's like see we if see. somebody gets it on the board before. Mara. Reptiles, probjotes okay. and reptiles. We need to be a little bit more Bacteria, specific. Bacteria, probjote is on this. Yeah, but Jeffrey we, Earl Ill is just guessing and speculating by saying fish. <laughs> Everybody. Rabbits? No way. Rabbits can't be up there with like a with fish, frogs and fish. They give like a whole jelly balls. Seahorses? Like chia seeds. Seahorses. Yeah, seahorses have see a lot. Three hundred. Wow, three hundred million eggs over the course of one spawning season. One really? seahorse, one two thousand babies. It seems like the whole world would be taken over by <laughs> seahorses. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it can be Hold as it. many as a hundred, as few as one hundred and fifty, or as many as two thousand. In, in one, in one spawning. Yeah. Jimmy James says spiders, but I think he's just he's a he's a pizza guy. What does he know? <laughs> <laughs> okay, well let's just work with the seahorse. Ticks can make ten thousand, according to Prub Jote. Ticks. Oh, we need we Jesus need to we need to Christ. fact check that one. <laughs> Ten thousand. No, I think that's true. That's All why right. I have the guinea, that's why I have the guinea fowl. So here. there's your ten thousand. So if a tick can do it, okay. why can't Duxha, who's like the son of Lord Burma, right? Like, there you go. That's what the, I wanted. Boom, I just wanted to defeated, be defeated. Okay. <laughs> I wanted to be defeated by you. All right. We got to defeat those doubts because my yeah. nature is to doubt everything. I think, oh, that's too fantastic. Now I'm going to stop my spiritual path because these guys, right? Yeah. Maya, well, illusion will use any good reason for me to get off my spiritual path. There you go. Uh, and they, you they, know, this makes sense. This makes sense. <laughs> this makes sense. 10,000 10, offspring. Forget it. This is crazy. Right. You know what's crazy? I don't want to control crazy? my senses. That's what's crazy. That's yeah. the real crazy thing. <laughs> right, because you keep suffering because of it, right? I keep suffering yeah. because of it. But, but I think that... The Bhagavatam is going to ask us to expand our mind, to expand our imagination, to, and really what that requires is humility, right? To say, hey, my tiny little sphere of, of, of experience is just that. It's tiny. It's not massive. It's incredibly tiny. And it's going to give us different ways to, to, to like say, hey, here's another perspective. Here's, another, here's a broader perspective. But I think, you know, the ability to expand one's imagination like that. You mentioned that people might say when you start to take these things literally, um, it, it, that's where religion goes wrong. And my response to that is that's not where religion goes wrong. Religion goes wrong where we start to judge everyone else rather than transform ourselves. Ooh, right? me likey. Re me yeah. likey. Re religion goes wrong where we use it as an, as an opportunity to try to make ourselves feel more important than another. We're really where it's meant to go 
is to see the unity in all of us, right? Like that's where the truth lies. But in order to see that, we need to accept this idea that God, the unlimited God, right, who supports all the universes, is present right within my own heart in its completeness. Now that requires some expansion of one's imagination, right? And, and, and this is where religion goes right, right? Where we begin to see the unit that God's in my heart, God's in your heart, that we're both made of God's energy and that every living being is. And so we need to start to respect one another and ultimately love one another. You know, that, that's where it goes right. But you're gonna have to expand your mind to get there. You're not gonna get there just with a microscope you know, mm. and saying, well, this is what I'm able to see under the microscope. So there's nothing else beyond that. Who the hell says there's nothing else beyond that? Like, wh wh where's your scientific ev You have no scientific evidence that there is nothing beyond that. And as a matter of fact, to assume that there's nothing beyond that is so short-sighted. It's almost pitiful that people think this way, you know, and, and, and I'm not going to buy into that kind of bluff, you know. So, so the question is, where do we get our information? Any kind of creation story that you get is going to be super far out, right? Any kind of creation story is going to be super far out. So the question is, which one are we going to choose? You know? Yeah, any birth itself is far out. A baby came out, out of my body, and, I, I was, and my body feeds the baby. That's far out. A I was, chicken lays yeah. an egg sits on an egg and then the little baby pecks his way out an unbelievable and what that little chicken is capable of doing what it's what its body is capable of doing without the chicken even knowing it how it heals itself how it reproduces right mm -hmm. i was i was on the beach yesterday and there are three girls like on a towel like you know the not too far away from me and they were just all discussing about like the human body and like how incredible. There's like three kind of ghetto girls, you know, they were cool. And they're just like, isn't the body amazing? Like they're just getting into it. That's where we need to think about that kind of stuff, right? That, that um, the more that you study the human body, the more you realize how amazing it is. And the more ridiculous it gets to buy into the bluff that nobody designed it, right? Yeah. And that it's just nothing and it's yeah and it's just right. just going on somehow so so if i gave you if like the clock if, was wound up and it's just ticking away till nothing like, like if 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 we like say it was winter and there was a lot of snow out and in front of Rogan's house there was like it, it there was like this intricate snow kind of statue right like someone even better than like a normal snowman like like a really like a snow like statue a, like a michelangelo kind of snow snow statue right a deity yeah something really well done you know with fine detail and and if someone and then we needed well okay we woke up in the morning there it is how to get there you know and, and and we and then you know what's the creation story how did it come about and if someone said, well, the snow just fell that way, right? And, you know, if enough snow falls, sooner or later, it's just going to fall just like that, right? Like, for me, that would be like a really far out mythical kind of creation story. No, someone had to do it, right? It didn't just happen. This is obvious, right? And so similarly, Bhagavatam is saying is that creation is coming from an intelligent source. It has to be. Come on, let's get real, right? And then it's saying, but that, that source is a person. And when we're dealing with people, they get creative in all kind of ways. They're into adventure. They're into fun. They're into doing things in all kind of far out ways. And that's what Bob, Bob Tom's going to lay all that out. That's what we're going to read about. Uh, all right. All right. All right. I hope Mero. Because, uh, well, that'll lead us, because tomorrow, like, uh, the Lord's going to take birth as a boar out of the nostril of... Lord Brahma, so we're headed to Brahma. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> we're right on pace we get now. For that. Mary, we got some good takeaways for today. We do. What can I bring into my course of my day from today's class? Act as if you're in control, but deeply understand you aren't in control. We're not the controller. Krishna wants to see if we have the desire to serve him. Hmm. Yeah. AJ Sullivan's There's No Hiding from the Hari Nam. <laughs> Good one. <laughs> They're gonna find you in front of your parents. Remember or even how about this for AJ? Things like there's undercover devotees all over the place, like that woman that was right there, right? Yeah. Or there's devotees right amongst us that we don't even amongst know. Amongst us. Maybe in your family. Yeah. <laughs>
Uh, remember the divine for a steady mind. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, find the friend within. Okay. Like that. Yeah. What was the other one? I said one, then I said no to time. Oh, I have that one. My, yeah. sorry, extreme <laughs> My minute independence can be engaged in disconnection or reconnection. Or reconnection. That's a good one. Yeah. yeah. That's a good one. Religion is unity, not judgment. Solely Jesus. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. 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 That's- yeah. That's where it goes right. Yeah. Okay. Half like the that. purification is to serve David Fleischer. Mm-hmm. I don't even remember us talking about that, but yes. I think that's just <laughs> what we like. It. How about how about seahorses spawn ten thousand babies? I think that was ticks. No, sea seahorses. Horses. Two thousand. Two thousand. You see, that's where mythology develops, right there, Ron. You just like you just threw Actually, out a wrong. No number. one even said. No one's even said, but. At that rate, it's like it seems like everything should be a seahorse or a tick. <laughs> <My> tick. <laughs> <laughs> These ticks are gonna kill us. <laughs> Sunfish. Hey, is today the day that's like the men's group and the ladies' group on the same day? Is that yeah, Tuesday? that's right. There's a Bakhti recovery group. Uh, the men are at 11 a.m. and the women's group is at 2 p.m. I wonder what the women are talking about over there, Rogan. Talking about the men. Yeah. Ah, uh, the men doing their thing in their men's group. <laughs> Just kidding. Thanks, everybody, for joining us. Remember, you got a good Christian miracle. You email it to Mara. We all want to hear it. We're going to have our big Christian miracle reading party next Friday. Write Mara at wisdomofthesages108 at gmail.com. Wisdomofthesages108 at gmail.com. And also, if you have questions for questions days, you can do that. Thanks to that person, uh, Danya Raj, who wrote that nice comment. It really yeah, helps you, our uh, ratings in the podcast community if you write a comment. So go to Apple Podcasts right now. If you haven't done this, this is your first way you can render some service today. Go to Apple Podcasts. Go to our uh, go to our podcast and give it a review, a five star review, and um, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, share your story, share your coming out story or your coming to story. We all want to hear it. Oh. Thanks, yeah, we did it. Five, 5 a.m. We're back. We're back. I don't think we picked up everybody that we lost, but they'll be back. Shiva. Shiva.